Okay. So I'll just introduce uh, uh, Bala sir. Uh, uh, now Chand- please put this off. <laughs> <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so uh, Chandrasekhar Balagopala, he is uh, known as the independent director of Federal Bank. And he's one of the persons I respect a lot. Yeah, he served as an IAS officer in various capacities in Manipur and Kerala. And in 1983, he resigned from the IAS and started his own uh, venture. Mr. Bala is the founding director of Peninsula Polymers Limited, which is uh, maybe more known as Penpol. And uh, this company went through various challenges before becoming the world's largest blood bag factory. And uh, today, they export their products to more than 50 countries. He's also set up the Anaha Trust to work with various community development uh, projects. He's a wonderful author and a voracious reader. You should, uh, if you visit him, you should see his book uh, collection. And I personally learned a lot during the interactions I had with him. And one uh, uh, thing I like in him is his uncanny ability to show us a completely different uh, picture uh, to the whole thing. So, uh, Bala sir, over to you. Okay, that's that was quick. Thank you. Um, so, um, um, I think I will speak for about 30-35 minutes and then uh, the, it will be good if we can have some uh, some, uh, you know, in, I won't say Q&A, but even interaction, any comments, anything which will make the whole session interesting. So how many people do we have on this call? Just I for my interest. Uh, 39. Ah, 39. They are all volunteers and people working with Venda? Ah, uh, we have uh, people from outside uh, Project Venda also joining. <clears throat> for example, <clears throat> we have one person from Dubai actually joining. So Mr. Johnson is there. <clears throat> and then a few of our friends who uh, are friends of Venda, but are not working with uh, Venda, everyone. Does. Okay, so why I asked that was I just wanted to know that there is a certain interest in the work of Venda and what uh, Fourthway Foundations, uh, you know, this kind of social and community related work is all about. So all the people here are people who are interested in that. Isn't yes, it? yes. I think yes. that's a, okay, thank you. So, and I also guess most of the people uh, who are attending would be very young people. True. Um, yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. So now, uh, so I'm specifically talking about all of you, regardless of what role you play in in uh, in this organization, uh, which is a wonderful organization, and I've considered it a privilege to have come and into contact with um, uh, uh, Diana and uh, Joseph and the work which you do, and and, uh, and the more and more I've learned about it, uh, uh, my admiration and uh, uh, regard for what you're doing has only gone up by leaps and bounds because given the kind of society which we are uh, which you are doing such work in i can only imagine the kind of um, pressures and pushback and uh, 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 difficulties which must be coming in your way it's not smooth sailing and the very fact that you've persisted for so many years is testimony to your grit, your determination, your commitment, and also the fact that you are probably succeeding in your work. Because I, I don't think you would be able to keep continuing um, and having so much energy and passion if you did not see some successes. So it's not all, you know, it's not exactly all uh, just difficulties and uh, bad news. You are obviously motivated to go on because every success gives you the energy to overcome difficulties even if they are 10 times bigger after that. So that's the, both the good news and the bad news, I would say. So the thing is, um, my um, um, proximity has given me some, uh, some perspective about this, but I'm not going to talk about your work and the work, work which you do. I have no uh, competence to, to give you any kind of advice on that. Uh, but uh, what I thought I will address my remarks to is the most of you, and especially the younger people among you, See, because, um, and I'm assuming most of your work is actually based in Kerala, because this is all centered around this. Uh, so, um, 
the the context in which we work is i think very important we need to understand that the society in which we work the context social context in which we work and that actually is one of the troubling things about our present uh, education um, all kinds of education and especially the undergraduate education which happens in engineering which happens in medicine which happens even in the social sciences astonishingly even in the social sciences is that they are not none of these uh, uh, learning experiences are rooted in the context in which we are um, supposed to be learning if you are studying um, uh, for an mba in an in, the, in an institute of management or in a any other management school if you look at the curriculum and if you look at the campus the buildings you, you listen to the language of the i mean the the kind of uh, examples which are thrown the case studies which are discussed you could as well be in denver colorado or in silicon valley or in um, uh, you know in siad or in uh, london business school there is nothing to indicate that you are in koji kod or in patanamthitta or in uh, you know or in um, uh, alua or something there is no context it seems to be completely um, uh, out of context that education system so i uh, why i would just like to take another minute to explain why this is important one of the people who very much influenced me in my life is unfortunately no more he died of old age his name is professor m n v nair professor nair was a celebrated teacher in and founder dean of iim bangalore and he and ram sami they were the ones who set up iim bangalore and um, um, professor um, nair retired from that and then later he went on and set up the uh, few other bharatiya universities uh, school of management studies he set up the management program in university of kerala so he's had a lot of influence at, and that's when i came in contact with him when professor nair passed away there was a memorial meeting held in the institution of engineers hall in uh, trivandrum and um, many of his admirers and students and all that the hall was full a few people walked in who i i didn't know who they were so one of the people from the audience stood up and said uh, after everybody made their, their speeches and said nice things about professor the late professor nair uh, one guy stood up and said can i say a few words so he came up to the mic and he said that he had been um, a student of professor nair at i am bangalore and he said professor nair's classes were the classes which opened the windows for us onto the real world otherwise the whole thing was surreal what they were learning they seem to have no connection with the world outside but when professor nair started his class till the end of his class you could feel the wind and the smells and the noise and the everything that is india was there in the classroom that's how that's why it is so important that you have context you must you know because if if you were doing a advocacy program or a or a drug, or a substance abuse program um, a prevention program like yours if you were doing it in in singapore or if you were doing it in western europe or if you're doing it in an american city it's completely different the contexts are different you have to understand the context so i took a little time on this because i'm going to talk about kerala okay so you will think what am i going to tell you about kerala which you don't already know isn't it you already we all know so many things about kerala isn't it we know that it has the highest literacy we know that it has the highest political mobilization we know that it has a lot of militant trade unions and worker organizations we all know in inverted commas that it is a laggard in industrial and economic development like my friend uh, uh, jose dominic uh, uh, used to say uh, red kept kerala green <laughs> you know? so he used to say from a tourism perspective so it is a, it's a very nice statement but i used to tell jose that he is completely wrong i mean that is my view but it sounds nice red kept kerala green because of the red flags no factories came here etc <laughs> so that's the the problem with that narrative is not only is it not correct not only is it misleading 
but we sub we um, make the mistake of falling for we become victims to the problem of the single narrative and the single narrative is trying to sum up any society in one sentence or one image or one dominant uh, picture you know so people say like ignorant indians will say western westerners ne family values illa you know so the presumption is we have some great family values here and uh, so that's a that's a similarly another single narrative westerners in a moral silla you know i mean people uh, views like this are held by uh, uh, otherwise educated people here, here in this country or we may say um, you know uh, north indians are very aggressive people south indians are very disciplined and polite people and so, uh, so these are all stereotypes these are all uh things were and stereotypes is one way we try to understand the world with so many thousands of images coming in stereotype there's nothing wrong with stereotypes but you must understand them for being what they are and then it's okay so the dangers of the single narrative are a different kind that is there is such a powerful narrative sometimes about a place on based on some things that say like for instance if somebody comes from abroad indian india is a dirty place so that's a narrative now it may be true of substantial parts of india it may be true of many of our streets etc but nevertheless it's a single narrative it's a powerful narrative it's a single narrative so kerala the single narrative about kerala is what ibada business on patilla no business and industry and all can be done here anybody having any common sense will go across the border to either coimbatore district or to kanyakumari district and any sensible person will run do business there because here it's not possible so this is the kind of now why is this important you are all going to work here you are probably none of you are going i mean i don't know how many of you may set up businesses of your own maybe not but or maybe you will but your imagining of the world in which you live and work is going to influence your work and outlook how you imagine that world and unfortunately the other part of it is the how you imagine your world your society your state is the state that is going to become the reality so it is like a you know it is like a self fulfilling statement in kerala ingena aanu enna kerala angana aavu as far as you are concerned to me it may be completely different but you will go through your life thinking kerala angana aanu because that's all you can see okay so i want to present another picture of kerala to you which will make you wonder am i talking about the same state okay so let's come to that to start with let me say i believe kerala is the only state in india which can aspire to become the taiwan of india or the south korea of india so let me just repeat that so you can so that you will know that you did not miss hear me that kerala is the only state in india which can become the taiwan of india or the south korea of india the public affairs and I'm, i'm just going to put a few facts and then i'll go into why i say that the public affairs center started by the late professor samuel paul in bangalore which has come to be recognized as one of the best social audit and um, uh, uh, you know government services audit independent organization in india has done a study on behalf of the niti ayog and for the last 3 years has concluded that the best governance in india is kerala the best governed state in india is kerala okay amartya sen a celebrated and great nobel laureate talks about the kerala model he refers to it as a miracle now amartya sen is not a man who is given to hyperbole you know he is he did not become one of the world's greatest economists by thinking everything is great and everything is wonderful he is a guy who respects truth he respects data 
and he goes by. So he has reasons for saying what he said. He says how when he was a young lecturer in Delhi School of Economics in the 50s, Kerala was a laggard state, was lagging behind all the other states in economic development and in income. And then Amartya Sen went on with his life after from Delhi School of Economics, he left, he went to Cambridge and he went to um, Harvard and then he went to various other places. And then when he revisited the subject in the 90s, in the mid 90s, he was astonished to find that the laggard state had become the leading state in India in per capita income, per capita consumption, in HDI, it looked like a different country. Kerala was an outlier. It was unlike any other state in India. And this had happened in just 30 years. So he, uh, he and uh, uh, his co-author Jean Brise, they have done some celebrated studies of this. And it, those are books which are really worth reading by even laymen, lay people should read those books. Today, Kerala enjoys the highest average standard of life in India. It has the highest per capita GDP in India. When inward remittances are counted as state income, actually it should be counted as state income, but in national income accounting, there is a peculiar convention that it is accounted only once. So it is accounted when calculating the national income. It is not computed again when calculating the state income. But that income comes only to Kerala. It doesn't go anywhere else. And that influences consumption in Kerala. It influences quality of life in Kerala. The highest per capita consumption expenditure by far. And consumption expenditure is the best indicator of standard of living and quality of life. It's more than income. It is the expenditure which is the indicator of that. Kerala has the best record in poverty removal. The last assessment done by the Niti Aayog is that less than 3% of the population of this state is living under poverty as defined by the government of India, which keeps the definitions keep changing. But the figure here is 3%. I don't think there is any other state in the single digit figure in India. So this is, this is Kerala. Okay. Slightly different picture, isn't it, from the state where red kept it green and there no industry and nothing very nice to talk about, isn't it? This is a state where you should just go out and absolutely brag about, is my, in, in my opinion. That's, those are the figures which I have just given here. So now let me uh, just quickly take you through some points about why, the, I mean, how this has happened. You know, in 1996, I'm not going into the earlier part of the history. I know there are many reasons, historical reasons, the pre-independence period, social reforms, so many things. All those contributed to this. But I just wanted to deal with some proximal causes, which you need not, we need not go back, uh, you know, 100 years and all that for that. We can just uh, find proximal causes in the last 30, 40 years itself. People's planning started in 1996, when the government of Kerala pushed the planning process down to the panchayat level. So by it, this meant that the powers and the capabilities and the funds were delegated, were pushed down to the panchayat level, and this was made meaningful. Functions like primary education, public health were transferred to the local self-governments. So they didn't just announce that you have the powers. They also transferred key functions like primary education, public health uh, in the PHCs and community health centers and the staff working there were transferred to the local self-governments. Kerala is still the only state which prepares a five-year plan. One third of the plan amount is transferred to the local self-governments for them to use as they see fit for projects which they feel they need in their municipality or panchayat or block panchayat. And these are untied grants. This is very important, which means no strings, no conditions. It's up to that panchayat to use it the way they want. Government officials in key departments were also transferred so that the local self-governments could have full operational control over them. 
these local self governments work in partnership with the self help groups the famous women self help groups in kerala which have come to be known as kudumbashree now the 44 lakh members of kudumbashree are there in kerala for 4.4 million members which means and there are supposed to be altogether about 8 million households in kerala which means 60% of the households of kerala are represented in the kudumbashree network in kerala okay local self governments that is the panchayats and municipalities and block panchayats work in partnership with the kudumbashree units as equals not just for uh, thrift uh, saving schemes and livelihoods but also in matters concerning gender rights etc so the uh, women among the listeners here today will be happy to know right down to the panchayat level in gender matters the local self governments etc work with the self help groups of kudumbashree self help groups these self help groups of kudumbashree are actually instruments of social democracy whereas local self governments are instruments of political democracy now i don't know um, you know how many of you have read ambedkar but i think he is one of the invisible men of of uh, you know invisible giants of indian history everybody has heard of him but nobody has read him you know everybody knows like who b r ambedkar was everybody knows he is the guy who is the author of the indian constitution but we don't know much more than that but recently uh, like you i too had uh, not read anything of him about a couple of years ago i read his famous book which is called annihilation of caste which is considered to be in in my view i would consider it and i agree with the assessment it is the greatest speech which was never made he was actually invited to give a speech by a hindu organization in lahore in 1936 or so so they asked him to send the text of his speech in advance so he sent the text of his speech they read it and they wanted some small changes to be made ambedkar refused then they told him then in that case we cannot have your speech he said okay so, so be it but ambedkar being ambedkar went ahead and published it as a book so that speech which was never made became one of the most widely read books of its time so i think if they had had the good sense to make allow him to make a speech no probably 500 people would have heard that speech but finally 5 million people ended up reading about ambedkar's views now ambedkar made a very famous statement in 1936 in that speech and that was one issue on which he disagreed with uh, mahatma gandhi and he disagreed with nehru and patel and all he said political freedom without social freedom social reform is meaningless so he, he said our society is ridden with so many inequities and injustices that merely getting political freedom without addressing these social problems is going to be meaningless and my friends you are all the young people you should think about it just look at the hold which caste still has today in india and don't you think ambedkar was right so i'm saying while we have many other problems like uh, substance abuse and uh, alcoholism and other i'll come to all those things we have some really deep these problems we have to look in a matrix which is defined by things like caste you cannot get away from caste you know i i know in some polite conversation when we sit there and we talk with people say why do you want to bring in caste you know that's the old thing you know that's all gone gone i mean what are we talking about there you know professor francis matthew of i am bangalore i heard i mean i am kodikod i heard a speech of this of this brilliant guy and in that speech he he give he puts up slides do you know what is the percentage of people from the dalit community in the media uh, uh, industry it must be some 0.1% the percentage of population is 14% okay i mean even if you take the if you take the narrowest definition of the list you still have 40 14% of 1.3 billion 
are Dalits. 0.1% is their representation in media. You take uh, the financial services industry, it must be even smaller. You know, the, the, what, what we call the, the cool, sexy um, jobs, you know, which everybody wants uh, after passing out of IIM or engineering. What are the dreams of all these people that they get placement in some merchant banking firm in Dalal Street, isn't it? In Bombay or Delhi or Bangalore or somewhere. There, the representation is less than that. Is it because they, are, they don't have the ability? Is it because they can't make it? Those are the, the misinformation. Those are the falsehoods which are spread. The only places where they have a decent representation is where they have been assured a representation and where there is constitutional protection to ensure that they have a fair chance, which is in government jobs and admission to government schools, government colleges, etc. If that was also taken away, this would be their plight even in those, even in education. So when you look at, when we look at society, you know, our society and say, there is so much wrong in our society, please remember that what is wrong is not just substance abuse. It's not just alcoholism. And, you know, these are things which you can say, okay, due to some individual character weakness, some some stress, some pressure, sometimes these, you might, we can have reasons and arguments which can sort of explain why these things happen. What explanation is there for the persistence of caste and community, even now, today? Do you know, for instance, that uh, for the clinical trial industry, when they are testing, <coughs> when they're testing a new <coughs> drug, they want people of a certain phenotype, you know. If they want people with a certain genetic disposition so that they get their samples to test uh, how does this drug work on people with this phenotype and that phenotype. Now, that's very difficult to get in a normal population across the world because people share a lot of common characteristics, isn't it? Do you know where the clinical trial people, companies from across the world, where they make a beeline to, to find where the iron walls of, of uh, you know, consanguinity and other things have been preserved, which have preserved the gene pool perfectly within vertical barriers of caste and jati? Only one place in the world, and that's India. So perfectly, hermetically sealed our caste system and uh, the way it operates is a jati system here in, in, in this country. Despite here and there, we might have some anecdotal evidence of some exceptions here and there. But medically, for the clinical trial industry to make a beeline from the rest of the world to come to India because they find these silos are still preserved thanks to strict laws of consanguinity, etc. So anyway, now the other the good news about Kerala is, so I was just talking about the self-help groups and how they empower gender. How I mean, I got into this digression because of uh, what I mentioned about uh, Ambedkar. Kerala is the one state which has taken steps. Here still, I mean, it is not that caste and community and jati and all that are not important. They are very important. So it shows despite enlightenment, despite education, despite nearly 10% literacy, and so many social reform movements, the hold of caste and community is so strong that it is only slowly breaking down, even in a place like Kerala. So can you imagine what its hold is going to be like in the other states? So how can we operate as if this doesn't exist, as if this is not there? This is an ever-present reality, my young friends, and we must never lose sight of this. Okay. Now, the other good things about Kerala, this state has because of its social welfare programs, which were enshrined 30, 40 years ago, has care and compassion programs which are aimed at destitutes, mentally challenged children, palliative care for terminally ill uh, cancer patients, and 10% of healthcare spending is earmarked by government policy for these specially disadvantaged groups. Now, just not only that, it has been earmarked. What, that, what many people don't know is what further steps have ha actually happened. And you all as people who are activists in the field, in social advocacy programs, 
uh, working against substance abuse, etc. You should be reassured to know that you're working in a state where the local self-government leadership and activists have earned recognition and respect for the work which they are doing for these specially disadvantaged groups. The names I, and addresses and even the geo, look, geo tags of every home with people with disabilities is there in the health service department's uh, computers. During this COVID epidemic, uh, this COVID pandemic, for instance, one of the first top of the line things was what? That people with comorbidities and people with other disabilities are at high risk. So these people were the first, the first state in the country which had this data uh, ready, already ready, which was ready and not because of COVID, was Kerala. Now, these are all the good news, but it's not perfect. No? We know it's not perfect. Every time we step out, we can see it's not perfect. So there's a lot of things which are wrong also here. For example, despite all this affirmative action, despite all this political mobilization, and probably because of the fact of the overriding politicization of our society, tribal development, tribal development is a subject which has been badly neglected. The Adivasis in this state have been really badly neglected. Relatively speaking, their lot may be better than in many other states, but that's hardly the, I mean, let us, you know, let us not compare ourselves with very badly misgoverned states and then start feeling very virtuous about it. You know what, my, Michelangelo was the one who said, the danger is not that you set your goal too high and fail. The danger is that you set your goal too low and succeed. You get what I'm saying, I hope. You know what I mean, isn't it? You can pat yourself on the back saying, oh, we are, we are good, we are better off, we are better than the Bimaru states. Is that a standard by which to compare ourselves? So tribal development, fisher folk, is another very badly neglected uh, fisher folk, uh, fishing community families. Alcoholism is a huge problem. Already during the pandemic and, uh, you know, when the reopening of the liquor shops, etc., we've been reading about uh, all kinds of terrible things happening inside homes and, um, you know, domestic violence and um, various other things which are closely related to alcoholism uh, and uh, drug abuse, etc. Conspicuous consumption. That's a paradox of Kerala. At one time, you know, when, say, 10 people are walking along the road, you couldn't really make out who was the guy from the upper uh, economic strata and who was, because all of them wore Monday shirt, to same, same sort of dress. But today, uh, you, know, you know, because of the fact that you can have uh, um, expensive cars, ostentatious houses, and all, it looks like we have gone the way like everybody else. Privatization of education has definitely not, in my opinion, my personal view, not brought really good uh, uh, consequences. It has vastly increased the number of um, educational opportunities, but it has also vastly increased the cost of education, which has meant that the, uh, the opportunities for the economically poorer sections is now restricted to government institutions. They cannot look anywhere else. Their opportunities aren't expanding. And since everybody competes for the seats of some of the best government institutions, there is a real problem that some of them, some of them will not get um, good opportunities. Then damage to environment. That's the paradox which uh, you know, I'm closely associated with some groups who are working in Vayanad. And I spent a lot of my childhood in Vayanad. My father was working in some tea, tea gardens in Vayanad when I was a child. And um, when the Gargan Committee report came, I mean, it was amazing how they were able to whip up such a public frenzy with even religious organizations joining in that and making it out to be as if uh, uh, Professor Dear, I mean, Professor Madhav Gadgil was some kind of a ignorant fellow who did not look at any, which was such a untruth. Every person there who spoke on those platforms was a liar. I want to just put it there in black and white. I don't care who they were, what costume they wore. They were liars and they had no hesitation lying about it just to discredit uh, something which they didn't like, the conclusions of that. And unfortunately, what has happened, it is like, I mean, at least they might, they might believe in divine retribution because 
Less than two years later came the mother of all floods. Uh, 2018 floods came. And those areas which, they, which Gargil spoke about, those areas and what the consequences which he spoke about, all that happened exactly the way he said it was. And I'm sure the saddest man must have been Madhav Gargil because it would have given him no satisfaction to be proved right. And now the people who are taking him most seriously, everybody is taking whatever he said. The WG, Western Guards uh, Committee for um, Environment and um, uh, Ecological uh, Protection, um, it's a big, bit of a mouthful, that name, WGCEEP. But it's a document you all should read because it will tell you about you know, how, how a scientific study is conducted properly. It was ignored. So damage to environment is the non-communicable diseases. We say, for instance, that our HDI is the best in India. This is a fact. Our HDI is equal to like first world uh, human development indices like infant mortality, life expectancy, and uh, female literacy, and uh, birth weight of babies, and so many parameters. We are um, like, a, like an advanced country. But the problem, that's the good news. The bad news is the non-communicable disease burden is very high in Kerala. And it seems to be increasing. And this seems to be related to lifestyle. Like, uh, for instance, among the highest incidence of diabetes and uh, obesity and um, cardio, ca cardiac, cardiovascular diseases, etc. Seems to be. So the pattern of disease uh, has, uh, the disease burden has changed. So going, f and, and I will now uh, wrap up here. So here we have a picture of a state which was a laggard state in the 50s, as Amartya Sen said. By the 90s, it had raced to the top. Now, how many of you knew that? You will be still thinking, oh, Kerala, okay, some uh, literacy. You know, when my, some of my business friends, whenever I talk about human development indices, they say, yeah, 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 you know, yes, Bala, I know you will be talking about human development. As if it is something very minor. I mean, I'm astonished at this response. What is the purpose of human development? What is the purpose of economic development? It is to lead a long life. It is to lead a healthy life. It is to lead a literate life. It is to be able to take interest in what is happening in society around you. Those are the purpose, purposes of development, isn't it? And when a state has achieved that, you, you think the purpose of development is to have a six-lane expressway with bullet trains going north to south whizzing up and down for, I mean, pointlessly. I still remember I attended a seminar just on a lighter note. Somebody said, Allah, you bullet train, the the So we can go zipping up and down, you know. There's nothing to do no, between Kalika Villa and Kasargur. So, I mean, bullet trains between Osaka and Tokyo, between Shanghai and Beijing and all that makes sense. Those are two economic powerhouses. But between Kalika Villa and, for God's sake, Kasargur, what are we talking about? So, let's start, let's become real and stop this kind of surreal kind of things, you know. So, this is the Kerala which we are talking about. A Kerala where where and let me just wrap up today will you all agree with me that we are arguably not only in the in the safest state in india during the pandemic arguably one of the safest places on the planet see british tourists who were stranded here at the outbreak of the epidemic and who when the lockdown happened had to be had to stay here and some of whom were found to be COVID-19 positive. They were admitted to government hospitals in Kollam and Patranditta Taluk and they were cured and when they took the flight back to their homeland when a chartered flight was arranged they said this is one of the best experiences of their lives and they said as soon as we can we'd like to come back. 
now i know you know friends i know many malayali friends of mine who used to say oh, how can you stay in cochin i you know i am in uh, this particular part of chennai and i am in that particular part of bombay and uh, we have this um, 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 kentucky fried chicken down the corner bangalore they used to brag about all the you know mcdonalds and the pubs and this and that and what not everybody now wants to somehow come back to kerala they are not feeling safe wherever they are why is and how did that happen is it that the covid virus doesn't like kerala or uh, something like that you you have a functioning public health system my friends that's it and i don't want that this is not the subject of my talk but i have been interacting very closely with the public health authorities here from contact tracing to uh, the treatment of uh, vulnerable sections you will be amazed at the standard operating procedures manuals etc see a doctor in a in a community health center in kasargod or in hosdur doesn't have to make a call to anybody because he or she just has to go to their website of their health department and refer to the concerned sop which will tell her exactly what to do that is the difference between the health public health system of kerala and the public health system of neighboring tamil nadu which is again one of the best administered states in india i am comparing with i am not comparing it with the absolute unspeakable boondocks like the bimaru state sir i am talking about one of the best administered states next door you see the difference there in the next administered state i was listening to a brilliant mla dr palnivel tyagarajan who was who was in a panel discussion saying what this that the tamil nadu government is stumbling around like a bunch of blindfolded fellows in a dark room whereas he said why don't they just learn from their colleagues next door in kerala so that's that's what kerala is so in such a socially mobilized place in such a place which has paid importance to human capital the only state in india where social reforms like land reforms and all were enacted which were precursors to economic development in east east asia see people forget how did what were the events which predated the their launching into economic development in in south korea in taiwan in thailand in malaysia etc you had land reform you had to have land reform there how was the capital how was the productive energies of people released so the only state where all this has happened and unfortunately our young people are not taught about all this are are in fact taught to mock this state to talk to 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 you know to talk about it in disrespectful terms whereas this is a state which should be celebrated and now people are discovering their own state you know just because it appeared in the mit technology review some people have discovered kk shailaja teacher and mahima pachi evlaya vaikuna in the mit technology review in boston aro pandu parnadu pole ramu kariyat made chemmi otta aal theater il keri illa adu kaana veli poi can film festival nu rendu award vaangittu undu tirichu vannu suddenly ticket kittanilla ellavarkum bhayangara therakku chamming kande pattu you know so maybe we are like that we have this massive inferiority complex so we need somebody else to come and certify all this but i hope i've given you some indication about the fact that you are all living and working in a state which should be a model for this country which is becoming a model for this country i have no doubt about it where else i mean what else can they do but other than look at these things unfortunately these are lessons which are not going to be easy to copy because some of the changes are generational changes all the goodwill in the world all the kind of uh, what do you call it bulldozer energy of some of our national leadership is not going to make suddenly uh, you know uh, say uh, infant mortality is not going to come down because the prime minister wants it to come down or niti ayog issues of fatwa is not going to come down it's going to come down only if a lot of patient work is done at the field level and a lot of other things must also happen so i think i will stop with that i think i have said enough controversial things i have opened up enough questions in your minds and i look forward to uh, some i have exceeded my i thought i will stop in about 40 minutes i have exceeded it by 3 minutes but i think is not too bad given my uh tension to run on over the time limits now i hand it back to joseph and um, diana to steer the rest of the discussion 
if people want to ask questions directly or you would like to curate the questions i leave it to you diana and joseph thank you so much thank you thank you bala uh, i think the floor is open if anyone wants to ask a question uh, you can just unmute your mic and ask or if you want to type the question in the chat room and you want me to ask the question i can also do but uh, preferably ask the question directly just unmute your mic and ask the question to bala uh but well, one question that has come in yeah. the chat room is uh the impact of gulf returnees and the yeah. decline of gulf boom in long term yeah. for kerala what is your opinion on, yeah. on that yeah that is going to it is going to be a huge factor because i mean, we must uh, just look at this see the gulf boom was not anybody's gift to kerala if anybody could have taken advantage of it why did kerala take advantage of it first because kerala was prepared for that you know we had invested in human capital in terms of education etc so people were in the best position to take advantage of it far ahead of any other part of india that's why to a, a couple of million malayalis are sitting there and not people from orissa and bihar and other places where the populations are much bigger so you had people who were you know i think it was louis pasteur who said what did he say chance favors the prepared mind you, know? you can't just go and sit under a tree hoping a coconut will fall and, and uh, you know i can uh, take that and go and sell it in the market and make some money and things like that that's one philosophy of life but um, uh, i think that way you, you wouldn't have discovered the law of gravitation you would have probably had a very sore head because if the coconut fell on the head it would have been pretty serious uh, thing uh, Isaac Newton when the apple fell on his head found uh, some uh, um, you know he he was able to transform physics because he was thinking about that problem so kerala was ready for this and how do i say that long before the uh, you know see the gulf boom started happening towards the end of the 70s actually in after 1980 it started up well before that kerala was a land of migrants Keralaites had migrated to the main growth centers of India because there were not enough jobs happening in Kerala. It is a fact. Because when with this massive expansion of universal school education and also uh, almost hundred percent enrollment in colleges, where are all those young people going to go? You are talking about an agrarian society which was slowly beginning to modernize. And the first phase, okay. So anyway, to come back to this, so the. people went to the gulf in large numbers they made money in fact nearly 30% of gsdp gross state domestic product nearly 30% of it is accounted for by inward remittances so that's a very significant amount of money so far there is very little evidence that this is coming down but it's going to come down i mean if you really look in terms of the actual inflows which are coming into the banks etc right now it is still remaining it's not growing but it's not decreasing either but it's going to come down therefore there are two kinds of problems one is these were going to family incomes in kerala now a significant part of that family income is not going to be there plus the double whammy is that these uh, hundreds of thousands of skilled people are going to come back to kerala because they are going to lose their jobs there because there is going to be a kind of uh, like uh, sons of the soil kind of uh, movements will start there political pressures will start building up even in those uh, the um, 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 shakedowns and all where there is no political freedom now of oh, those kind they can't continue to ignore all this so people will be coming back so the the bad news is you are going to have in the short term you are going to have a problem of a large number of people coming back who are going to come back with skills and some money in the bank but will be looking for employment will be looking for jobs the good news the way i look at it is this is also a phenomenal opportunity for kerala because these are say if you take a plumber if you take a, a construction worker if you take an electrician these guys who have gone and worked there they have worked with the best technologies the most modern equipment the most modern plumbing systems the most modern air conditioning system and we that's the direction in which we are going to go 
so if we are if we play our cards right and we have smart entrepreneurs here in kerala and we have good producer aggregator and service aggregator systems like something on the lines of uh, uber and ola and all that and if we have those kind, and it's already happening we can have a system where if i am a plumber and i come back from the gulf or from the gulf itself i can go and register on this platform and say i have this skill i am from perundal manna i have this and i have this toolbox also which i am going to bring back these are the tools which so with which i can so if i am a contractor here and i want say uh, 20 people with that skill and i find 20 of them also have their own toolkits and everything they're going to come back with i mean isn't that a wonderful uh, win win situation so why should we look on that these see these are not people who are going to go and register in an employment exchange for getting unemployment benefits no these are people who are already in their 30s and 40s who have earned good money have some money in the bank and are are looking for um, you know for uh, gainful employment they will be willing to take a cut in the pay because they can stay at home so they don't have to commute they don't have to pay rent they can work very close to where they are isn't it so i think we are going to see in the short term there's going to be bad news in terms of uh, 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 people coming back who will have to be accommodated who will have to be looked after who will have to be uh, some of them may have to be reskilled etc but the other thing is they are all people who have worked in a modern industrial commercial uh, environment and hence are employment ready not like the fresh graduates from our colleges these people are employment ready you just have to plug and play sort of facility has to be avoided i mean uh, uh, you know sort of given to them in the very short term i don't think there will be a very steep drop in remittances but within the next 5 years you will find a significant decline in remittances happening which will affect the gross rate domestic product and um, uh, we have to have uh, uh, you know other means to to compensate that that is going to be a real problem i know that the state government has created a task force with the with the many um, senior people who are all thinking about it and coming going to come up with good plans i believe those plans we'll start hearing about those plans very soon but it's a big problem thank you bala vera arkelum malayalathilum choikkan kato Oh, are there any more questions? Yes, Rashmi. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning. 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 എനിക്ക് ചോദിക്കാനുള്ള ചോദ്യം എന്ന് വെച്ച് കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഇപ്പം റീസ ഗവൺമെന്റിന്റെ ഒരുപാട് ലോൺസ് ഒക്കെ ഉണ്ട് ഇങ്ങനെ ചെറുപ്പക്കാർക്ക് വേണ്ടിയിട്ട് മുദ്ര ലോൺസ് എം എസ് എം ഇസിന് വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ള ഈ റീസെന്റ് ആയിട്ട് വന്ന ആത്മ നിർഭർ ആത്മനിർഭർ ഭാരത് അഭിയാൻ ഒക്കെ അപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ലോൺസ് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിലും എന്റെ മനസ്സിൽ ആസ് എ യൂത്ത് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ എന്റെ ഫാമിലിയിൽ എല്ലാവരും ഗവൺമെന്റ് എംപ്ലോയീസ് ആണ് എല്ലാവരും പറഞ്ഞു കേട്ടിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കാര്യമാണ് ഒരു ഗവൺമെന്റ് ജോലി വാങ്ങി കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ സെക്യൂർഡ് ആണ് കാര്യം നിനക്ക് നാളെ എന്തെങ്കിലും വൈഹത വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാല് മാസം ശമ്പളം കിട്ടും അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റിട്ടയർഡ് ആയി കഴിഞ്ഞാല് പെൻഷൻ കിട്ടും അപ്പം വീട്ടിലെ കാര്യങ്ങളൊക്കെ നടന്നു പോകും പക്ഷെ ആ സേ ബിസിനസ് വരുന്ന സമയത്ത് എത്രത്തോളം ഞങ്ങൾ ഇതിൽ സെക്യൂർഡ് ആണ് കാര്യം അതിൽ കുറെ റിസ്ക് ഫാക്ടർ ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ എന്റെ ഡൗട്ട് എപ്പോഴും അതാണ് നമ്മൾ ലോണൊക്കെ എടുത്ത് ബിസിനസ് നടത്തിയാലും ഇതിന് നമുക്ക് റിസ്കി അല്ലേ അത് സക്സസ് ആയി പോവോ പ്രോഫിറ്റ് വെരി ഗുഡ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ റേഷ്മ ഗുഡ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഇനിയും നമ്മളെ ഈ നമ്മളെ ഈ ഈ പോസ്റ്റ് കോവിഡില് ആക്ച്വലി ലോകം മാറിക്കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയായിരുന്നു ഇതുവരെ പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ അത് ശ്രദ്ധിച്ചില്ല ആ മാറ്റങ്ങൾ നമ്മൾ ശ്രദ്ധിക്കാതെ പോയതാണെന്നേ ഉള്ളൂ ഈ കോവിഡ് കാരണം പല കാരണ കാര്യങ്ങളും നമ്മൾ ഇനി ശ്രദ്ധിക്കേണ്ടി വരും അതിൽ ഒരു കാര്യം എന്താന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ജോലി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ആ പ്രതിഭാസം അതിന്റെ അതിന്റെ അളവ് തോത് ഇപ്പം ഇപ്പം നമ്മൾ ടോട്ടൽ എംപ്ലോയ്മെന്റിന്റെ എത്ര ശതമാനമാണ് ഗവൺമെന്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അത് ആ സംഖ്യ കുറയാനേ ഇനി ഇടമുള്ളൂ അത് കൂടാൻ പോകുന്നില്ല എന്താന്ന് പറഞ്ഞാൽ അത് രണ്ട് കാരണങ്ങളുണ്ട് ഒന്ന് ടെക്നോളജി കാരണം ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് എംപ്ലോയ്മെന്റിന്റെ ടോട്ടൽ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് എടുത്താൽ അതിലൊരു നല്ല ശതമാനം 
is clerical staff adayade lower division clerk upper division clerk super and adu idennaka paranjitte you don't need any of those once you have computerized that process ellam aa udyogasthana thanne cheyavunna karyangale ullu appo ee udc ldc section officer pinne pune etom enike etom veruppu thonunna oru category aanu ee pune പഴയ കൊളോണിയൽ ഇത് ഫയൽ എടുത്തോണ്ട് ചുമന്നോണ്ട് എന്റെ ഡെസ്കിൽ നിന്ന് അടുത്ത ഡെസ്കിലേക്ക് ചുമന്നോണ്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോകാനാണ് ഈ ആശാന്റെ ജോലി അവരുടെയൊക്കെ ശമ്പളം എത്രയാണെന്ന് അറിയോ ടുഡേ സാലറി ഓഫ് ദറ്റ് ഗ്രേഡ് ഫോർ എംപ്ലോയി വിൽ ബി അബൌട്ട് ഫിഫ്റ്റി തൗസൻഡ് റുപ്പീസ് എ മന്ത് എല്ലാം കൂടെ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു പെൻഷൻ ബെനിഫിറ്റ്സും കൂടെ എല്ലാം കൂടെ നെറ്റ് പ്രസന്റ് വാല്യൂ കാൽക്കുലേറ്റ് ചെയ്ത് ഇപ്പം ഇത് ഞാൻ പറയാൻ പോകുന്ന കുറച്ച് കോൺട്രവേഴ്സി ഇല്ല പക്ഷെ ഞാൻ പറയാതിരിക്കാനും പറ്റില്ല ഈ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗവൺമെന്റ് അടച്ചു പൂട്ടിയാൽ സെക്രട്ടേറിയറ്റ് നമ്മൾ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗവൺമെന്റ് പറയുമ്പോൾ നമ്മൾ മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്ന സെക്രട്ടേറിയറ്റ് സെക്രട്ടേറിയറ്റ് അടച്ചു പൂട്ടിയാൽ എന്താണ് മുടങ്ങാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഐ മീൻ എന്താണ് നിൽക്കാൻ പോകുന്നത് എന്തെങ്കിലും നിൽക്കുമോ നമ്മൾ പൈപ്പ് തുറക്കുമ്പോൾ വെള്ളം വരും സെക്രട്ടേറിയറ്റ് അല്ലല്ലോ അത് വാട്ടർ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റിന്റെ സ്റ്റാഫാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് ഇലക്ട്രിസിറ്റി സ്വിച്ച് ഓൺ ചെയ്യുമ്പം ഇലക്ട്രിസിറ്റി വരും നമ്മുടെ കെ എസ് ആർ ടി സി ബസ് ഓടും അതും സെക്രട്ടേറിയറ്റ് ഉദ്യോഗസ്ഥരൊന്നും അല്ലല്ലോ അപ്പം അന്ന് ആരോ പറഞ്ഞതുപോലെ ഒരു ഇതിന്റെ ഏറ്റവും രസകരമായിട്ടുള്ള ഞാൻ ഇത് പറയാൻ കാരണം ജസ്റ്റ് സേ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ജോലിയുടെ പ്രസക്തി കുറയാൻ പോവാണ് അപ്പം ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ജോലി അഥവാ നമ്മൾ അതിനെ പറ്റി അതിന്റെ ചില ഘടകങ്ങൾ നമ്മൾ പറഞ്ഞു എന്താ ആ ആ ജീവനാന്തം ഉള്ള ഇതിപ്പൊ മരിക്കുന്നത് വരെ പെൻഷനും അത് ഇത് ഒരു ഭാരം തന്നെയാണ് സമൂഹത്തിൽ ഞാൻ എന്ത് ചെയ്തു ഇരുപത് വർഷം ഞാൻ ക്ലാർക്കായിട്ട് മേശയെന്ന് ഒരു ഫൈൽ എടുത്ത് അങ്ങോട്ട് കൊണ്ടുപോയി അതുകൊണ്ട് അടുത്ത തലമുറയെ എനിക്ക് ശമ്പളം തന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കണം ആലോചിച്ച് നോക്കണം പക്ഷെ ആശാ വർക്കർ ഒരു വീട്ടിൽ ചെന്ന് അവിടെ അവശ ആയിട്ട് കിടക്കുന്ന ആ ആ വയോധ്യ സ്ത്രീയെ സകല കാര്യങ്ങളും നോക്കാൻ ചെല്ലുന്നവർക്ക് കോൺട്രാക്ട് അടിസ്ഥാനത്തിൽ ഏഴായിരം രൂപയാണ് ശമ്പളം ഇത് എന്ത് വിരോധാഭാസമാണ് ഇത് ഏത് സ്വർഗത്തിലോ നരകത്തിലാണ് ഈ നിയമം ഉണ്ടാക്കിയത് ഒരു പണിയും ചെയ്യാത്ത ഒരുത്തന് പെൻഷൻ കിട്ടും ആ ജീവനാന്ത് മരിക്കുന്നത് വരെ വറ്റത് ഒരു സ്ത്രീ ഒരു ഒരു പത്ത് പന്ത്രണ്ട് മണിക്കൂർ ജോലി ചെയ്യണം കിട്ടുന്നത് ടെമ്പററി ജോബ് ഒരു ബെനിഫിറ്റും ഇല്ല ഏഴായിരം രൂപയും ഇപ്പൊ ആരോ പ്രൊഫസർ ജെ ദേവിക സെന്റർ ഫോർ ഡെവലപ്മെന്റ് സ്റ്റഡീസ് പറഞ്ഞു നമ്മൾ എല്ലാവരും സ്തുതിച്ചോണ്ട് പ്രശംസിച്ചോണ്ടിരിക്കുന്ന അല്ലെ കുടുംബശ്രീയിലെ സ്ത്രീകള് നമ്മളിപ്പോ ആക്ച്വലി അവരെ ചൂഷണം ചെയ്യുകയാണ് എന്ത് കാര്യത്തിനും അവരെ ഉപയോഗിക്കുകയാണ് പണി ചെയ്യേണ്ടവന്മാരും മുറുക്കും മുറുക്കന്മാർ അവിടെ ഇങ്ങനെ സർക്കാർ ഓഫീസുകളിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്ന ഒരു പണിയും ചെയ്യാതെ ഈ സ്ത്രീകളെ കൊണ്ടാണ് എല്ലാം ജയിപ്പിക്കുന്നത് ഈ റിലീഫ് വരുന്നതും ഫ്ലഡ് റിലീഫ് വന്നാലും കോവിഡ് റിലീഫ് വന്നാലും എന്താണെങ്കിലും സെൽഫ് ഹെൽപ്പ് ഗ്രൂപ്പിൽ നാൽപ്പത്തിനാല് ലക്ഷം ഇവര് പേര് ഇവിടെ ഉണ്ട് കമ്മിറ്റഡ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള സർക്കാർ കൂവുകളായിട്ട് അവരെ ചൂഷണം ചെയ്യാണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അല്ലാതെ ഈ അഞ്ച് ലക്ഷം ശമ്പളം വാങ്ങിക്കുന്ന പെൻഷൻ ബെനിഫിറ്റ്സ് ഉള്ള സകല ബെനിഫിറ്റ്സ് ഉള്ള സർക്കാർ ഉദ്യോഗസ്ഥരെ കൊണ്ട് ജോലി ചെയ്യിപ്പിക്കുകയല്ല ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ പറയുന്ന ഈ വംശ ഈ ഒരു വർഗം ഇല്ലാതായി പോകുന്നത് നല്ലതാണ് നമ്മുടെ സമൂഹത്തിന് നേരെ മറിച്ച് നമ്മൾ ഇതിന്റെ എത്രയോ മടങ്ങ് ജോലി ഉണ്ടാക്കേണ്ട ക്രിയേറ്റ് സൃഷ്ടിക്കേണ്ട ഒരു വിഭാഗമുണ്ട് അതായത് നമ്മുടെ ഡ്രെയിൻസ് ഒക്കെ ക്ലീൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന ആരാണ് നമ്മുടെ സൂവേജ് സിസ്റ്റംസ് ക്ലീൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന ആരാണ് നമ്മുടെ റോഡുകൾ നന്നാക്കുന്ന ആരാണ് നമ്മുടെ വാട്ടർ സപ്ലൈ തരേണ്ട ആരാണ് നമ്മളൊക്കെ അസുഖം വന്നാൽ നമ്മളെ ശുശ്രൂഷിക്കേണ്ട നേഴ്സുമാർ ആരൊക്കെയാണ് അതിൽ ആ എന്താ പറയുന്ന എണ്ണത്തിലും ഒക്കെ ഡു വി ഹാവ് ഇനഫ് നേഴ്സസ് നമ്മുടെ പ്രൈമറി ഹെൽത്ത് സെന്ററിൽ ആവശ്യമുള്ള നഴ്സസിന്റെ സ്ട്രെങ്ത് ഉണ്ടോ അവിടെ അവിടെ ഒന്നും ഇല്ല ശമ്പളം ഇല്ലെന്ന് പറയും ബഡ്ജറ്റ് ഇല്ലെന്ന് പറയും ഫൈനാൻസ് മിനിസ്റ്റർ എന്തുകൊണ്ട് നോക്കാത്തത് ഈ ഇപ്പൊ ഉള്ള പൈസ ആർക്കാണ് പോകുന്നത് ശമ്പളം പെൻഷനും അതും ഇതൊക്കെ പറയുന്നത് ഒരു പണിയും ചെയ്യാത്തവര് ആ അപ്പം നേരെ മറിച്ച് കമ്പയർ ടു ദി സെക്ഷൻ വിച്ച് റിയലി ഇസ് ഡൂയിങ് ദ ഹാർഡ് വർക്ക് ഈ സെൽഫ് ഹെൽപ്പ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ്സിലുള്ള സ്ത്രീകൾ ഈ ആശാ വർക്കേഴ്സ് ആംഗൻവാടി വർക്കേഴ്സ് അവരെയൊക്കെ ടെമ്പററി അടിസ്ഥാനത്തിലാണ
ഒരു പത്ത് മടങ്ങ് ഇവരുടെ ഉള്ള തസ്തികകൾ കൂട്ടി ഈ ലോവർ ഡിവിഷൻ ക്ലാർക്കുമാരും എല്ലാ അല്ല അപ്പർ ഡിവിഷൻ ക്ലാർക്സും സെക്ഷൻ ഓഫീസേഴ്സിന്റെ എല്ലാത്തിനെയും ഒന്നിൽ പിരിച്ചിട്ട് അവരുടെ ശമ്പളം വീട്ടിൽ അയച്ചു കൊടുക്കുക ചെയ്യുന്നു അവർ ജോലിക്ക് വരാതിരിക്കുന്നതാണെങ്കിൽ സാരമില്ല ഒന്നും നമ്മളെ എന്താ പറയുന്നത് മുടങ്ങാൻ പോകുന്നില്ല അപ്പം ഈ ഈ ആന്ത്രപ്രണർഷിപ്പ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ നോക്കണം ഈ പശ്ചാത്തലത്തിൽ നമ്മൾ സ്വന്തമായിട്ട് എന്തെങ്കിലും അവനവന്റെ കഴിവ് വെച്ചിട്ട് എന്തെങ്കിലും ചെയ്യുന്നതല്ലേ നല്ലത് അഫ്കോസ് അതിൽ റിസ്ക് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പൊ ഇത് നമ്മൾ വിചാരിക്കുന്നത് ഈ പത്മനാഭന്റെ നാല് കാശ് എന്ന് പറയുന്ന തിരുവിതാംകൂറിൽ പണ്ടത്തെ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് എന്താണ് അത് ഒരു ഗുമസ്തെന്ന ഒരു 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 ക്ലാർക്ക് എന്ന് ജോലി കിട്ടിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ പിന്നെ 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 സ്വർഗമായല്ലോ ഒന്നും ചെയ്യണ്ടല്ലോ അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ദേഹാനക്കണ്ടല്ലോ അല്ലെ പാരഡൈസ് ആ ആ കാലമൊക്കെ ഐ തിങ്ക് ഷുഡ് ഷുഡ് ചേഞ്ച് ബിക്കോസ് നമ്മുടെ സൊസൈറ്റി കനോട്ട് അഫോർഡ് ഇറ്റ് വി ഡോ ഇറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എൻ ഇൻജസ്റ്റിസ് അത് അൺഫെയർ ആണ് ഈ ആശാ വർക്കേഴ്സും ആംഗൻവാടി വർക്കേഴ്സും ഒക്കെ ഉള്ള അവരെ പരിഗണിക്കുന്ന അവരുടെ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് മനസ്സിലാക്കുന്ന ഒരു ഒരു തൊഴിൽ സംവിധാനം ഒരു തൊഴിൽ തൊഴിൽ സംസ്കാരമാണ് നമുക്ക് വരേണ്ടത് അത് വരും അതിനെപ്പറ്റി എനിക്ക് യാതൊരു സംശയം ഇല്ല അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ സമൂഹം വലിയ ഒരു വില കൊടുക്കേണ്ടി വരും രേഷ്മയുടെ സിമ്പിൾ ക്വസ്റ്റിൻ ഇത്രയും ഭയങ്കര ഒരു തീവാറുന്ന പ്രസംഗം ആവശ്യം ഇല്ലായിരുന്നു തോന്നുന്നു പക്ഷെ എനിക്കിത് വല്ലാതെ ഫീൽ ചെയ്യുന്ന ഒരു സബ്ജക്റ്റ് ആണ് because yeah. most of our youngsters have a very conditioned the thought process on that because ee parane ipam nammude office work enna oru vidham pillarum they aspire because of the security uh, while they know that uh, the jobs that they are doing right now is far more challenging far more uh, adhe, cool, adhe. but there's a pressure from the social and the homes and the system appa appa adanu njan parayna dayana ivudte nammude paradox idana that ഈ നിങ്ങളുടെ വേണ്ടായിലുള്ള ടീം ഒക്കെ ചെയ്യുന്ന ജോലി എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഓഫീസേഴ്സിന്റെ ശമ്പളം മിനിമം മിനിമം ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഓഫീസേഴ്സിന്റെ ശമ്പളം കൊടുക്കേണ്ട അർഹിക്കുന്ന ജോലിയാണ് അവര് ചെയ്യുന്ന ജോലി ഈ ഗവൺമെന്റ് ഉദ്യോഗസ്ഥർ ചെയ്യുന്ന ജോലിയെക്കാട്ടിലും എത്രയോ ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ആണ് നിങ്ങൾ ചെയ്യുന്ന ജോലി പക്ഷെ എന്തൊരു വിരോധാഭാസമാണ് നമ്മുടെ ഇവിടുത്തെ നമ്മുടെ സമൂഹം എന്ത് വില കൊടുക്കുന്നത് എന്ത് വാല്യുവേഷൻ ആണ് ചെയ്യുന്നത് അപ്പൊ ഇതിൽ നിന്ന് ഞാൻ ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് മാർസ് മാർസോ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ജൂപ്പിറ്റർ എന്ന ഏതെങ്കിലും ഒരു പ്രാണി ഇവിടെ വന്ന് നമ്മുടെ പേ സ്കെയിൽസും ജോബ് ഡിസ്ക്രിപ്ഷൻസും കണ്ടാൽ വിചാരിക്കും ഇത് എന്ത് പെക്യുലിയർ പീപ്പിൾ ഒരു ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസും ഇല്ലാത്ത ഒരു പണിയും ചെയ്യാത്ത ഒരു വർഗത്തിന് ഇത്രയും ബെനിഫിറ്റ്സ് എല്ലാം കൊടുക്കുന്നു ആ സമൂഹത്തിന് ആവശ്യമുള്ള ഏറ്റവും ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റും ഏറ്റവും മീനിങ്ഫുൾ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ജോലി ചെയ്യുന്നവർക്ക് ഒന്നും കൊടുക്കുന്നില്ല ഇതെന്തൊരു സമൂഹമാണ് I have a question. I am going to ask you. Yes, yes. What's your name? My name is Nino. Okay, Nino. Okay. I am going to ask you. Now, sir, we are going to talk about the context of Manislaki. We are going to talk about Manislaki. We are going to talk about the trend of the usual Kerala. We are going to talk about the trend of Kerala. സെക്യൂർ ലൈഫ് എടുക്കാൻ പറ്റില്ല ഇപ്പൊ ഒരാ അപ്പൻ കൃഷിക്കാരനാണെങ്കിൽ മകൻ ഒരിക്കലും കൃഷിക്കാരൻ ആവരുത് എന്റെ മോൻ ഇച്ചിരി കൂടെ സെക്യൂർ ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു സ്ഥലത്തേക്ക് പോണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ കൊച്ചിനെ കേരളത്തിൽ നിന്ന് പുറത്തു വിടണം ഇതൊക്കെയാണ് ഇപ്പത്തെ ന്യൂ ജനറേഷനും അങ്ങനെയാണ് തിങ്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നത് എന്തുകൊണ്ട് നമുക്ക് ഇപ്പം നമ്മുടെ ഓൺ നമ്മുടെ ബേസിൽ നിന്നുകൊണ്ട് കാര്യങ്ങൾ അച്ചീവ് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇത് ഈ ഏരിയയിൽ പുതിയ പുതിയ കാര്യങ്ങൾ ട്രൈ ഔട്ട് ചെയ്ത് പുതിയ പുതിയ ടെക്നിക്സ് ഒക്കെ കൊണ്ടുവന്ന് ഇതൊരു സക്സസ് മോഡൽ ആക്കാൻ പറ്റുന്ന തിങ്ക് ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല അല്ലെ അതിനുവേണ്ടി ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻസ് കൊടുക്കുന്നില്ല ഈവൻ നമ്മുടെ ഗവൺമെന്റ് പോലും നമ്മുടെ ബേസ് ആണ് ഫാർമേഴ്സ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഫിഷേഴ്സ് ഫിഷറി കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റി ഇതെല്ലാം നമ്മുടെ ബേസ് ആണ് പക്ഷെ ഒന്നും അത് നമ്മൾ ഫോക്കസ് ചെയ്യുന്നില്ല കുഞ്ഞിനെ മുതൽ കുട്ടികളെ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്ന എന്താ രേഷ രേഷ്മ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ പഠിച്ചിറങ്ങി ഈ അപ്പൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന പണിയല്ല ഇത് വലിയ സെക്യൂർ ഒന്നും അല്ല സോ യു ക്യാൻ ഡു സംതിങ് എൽസ് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇച്ചിരി കൂടെ വൈറ്റ് കോളർ ജോബ് ബട്ട് വൈറ്റ് കോളർ ജോബിനേക്കാളും നമ്മൾ ഇന്ന് നമ്മുടെ മണ്ണിനോട് ചേർന്ന് നിൽക്കുന്നതാണ് ഏറ്റവും ബെസ്റ്റ് ആയിട്ടുള്ള ഒരു കാര്യം പക്ഷെ അത് നമ്മളോട് ആരും പറഞ്ഞു തരുന്നു ഇല്ല നമ്മളെ ഇങ്ങനെ അൺസെക്യൂർ ആക്കണം അയ്യോ ഈ പണി ചെയ്താൽ നിനക്ക് ഒരു വില ഉണ്ടാവില്ല സോ നീ ഇങ്ങനെ മാറി ചെയ്യണം അപ്പം എന്തുകൊണ്ട് നമു
ഒരു പ്ര ഒരു പ്രസ്ഥാനം തുടങ്ങണം അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു പുതിയ കമ്പനി തുടങ്ങണം ഒരു വർക്ക് ഷോപ്പ് തുടങ്ങണം അത് ആരെങ്കിലും അനുവാദം വേണോ എന്തോ പറഞ്ഞു ഗവൺമെന്റിന് എന്തുവാ ചെയ്യാൻ ഇതില്ല ഞാൻ പറയുന്നത് നിങ്ങൾ നമ്മൾ ആ ചിന്ത മാറ്റണം നമ്മുടെ മനസ്സിൽ ഗവൺമെന്റിന് എന്തിനെ ആശ്രയിക്കുന്നത് ഗവൺമെന്റിന് എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും അപ്പം ഇപ്പം ഞാൻ ഞാൻ എന്റെ ഐ എ എസ് ജോലി ഉപേക്ഷിച്ച് ആരുടെ അടുത്തും ചോദിച്ചില്ല ഞാൻ ആരുടെ അനുവാദവും ചോദിച്ചില്ല അത് ആരെങ്കിലും അത് ചോദിച്ചിരുന്നെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ആരും എന്റെ അപ്പ തന്നെ എന്റെ കൈയും കാലും കെട്ടി നീ മര്യാദ ഇങ്ങനെ ഒന്നും ചുമ്മാതെ ഇങ്ങനെ പ്രാന്തി പറയണ്ട എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ് പറഞ്ഞാൽ ഞാൻ ചുമ്മാതെ എന്തെങ്കിലും എനിക്ക് വേണ്ടത് പോലെ ചെയ്യും അപ്പൊ ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു വരുന്നത് ഇത് അവൻ അവന്റെ ഡിസിഷൻ ആണ് മനസ്സിലായില്ലേ യു യു ഡോ യു കനോട്ട് ബ്ലെയിം സംബഡി എൽസ് ഫോർ ഇറ്റ് യു കനോട്ട് എക്സ്പെക്ട് എനിബഡി എൽസ് ഫോർ ഇറ്റ് വാട്ട് യു ഹാവ് സെഡ് ഇസ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പെർസെന്റ് കറക്റ്റ് കേരളത്തിന്റെ വന്നുകൊണ്ടിരിക്കുന്നു ബൈദവേ സംഭവിച്ചോണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് ഞാൻ ഒരു എന്റെ നാലാമത്തെ ബുക്കിന്റെ വിഷയം മേക്ക് ഇൻ കേരള എന്നാണ് അതിന്റെ തീം ഞാൻ പഠിക്കുന്ന എന്താണ് കഴിഞ്ഞ മുപ്പത് വർഷം മുപ്പത് മുപ്പത്തഞ്ച് വർഷം കേരളത്തിൽ ചെറുതായ ചെറിയ തോതിൽ തുടങ്ങിയ വ്യവസായ സംരംഭങ്ങൾ വിജയിച്ച അമ്പത് വ്യവസായ സംരംഭങ്ങളെ ഞാൻ പഠിക്കുകയാണ് ഫിഫ്റ്റി അവരെല്ലാം അമ്പതിനായിരം രൂപ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ലക്ഷം രൂപ ക്യാപിറ്റൽ ഒക്കെ വെച്ച് തുടങ്ങിയ കമ്പനീസ് ഇന്ന് ആരും പറയും ഇന്ന് എല്ലാവരും മറന്നു കാണും സിന്തൈറ്റ് സി വി ജേക്കബ് അമ്പതിനായിരം രൂപ ക്യാപിറ്റൽ വെച്ച് തുടങ്ങിയതാണ് അയാൾ ഫസ്റ്റ് ജനറേഷൻ ആന്റർപ്രണറാണ് ദർ വാസ് ഡേ ഡിൻ ഹാവ് എനി ഇൻഡസ്ട്രിയൽ ബാക്ക്ഗ്രൗണ്ട് ഇൻ ഡിങ് കർഷക ഫാമിലി നിന്ന് കിറ്റക്സ് ഇവരെങ്ങനെയാ തുടങ്ങിയത് മറ്റേ പി കെ സ്റ്റീൽസ് ഇന്ത്യയിലെ most profitable and most efficient steel casting unit pk steel pk ahmed nu parna aalu kolikottu thodangi logathu forbes have uh, ranked six steel casting companies in the world have been ranked only one company from india pk steel only one company from china one company from us and three companies from japan one company is from kolikottu pk steels nothing to do with spices nothing to do with tourism onnum alla njan padikkina 50 companies ella manufacturing companies aan so njan parayna there is oru maatham vannondirikkana nammal aaru notice cheyunnilla because idu government inde paddathi alla aaro oru mariyade below the radar quietly ee companies have come adile oru company ende company aanu എത്രയോ വർഷം മുമ്പ് ചെറിയ ഒരു 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 സ്മോൾ സ്കെയിൽ യൂണിറ്റ് ആയിട്ട് പെൻപോൾ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞ കമ്പനി തുടങ്ങിയതാണ് അന്ന് അമ്പത് പേര് ജോലി ചെയ്യുന്ന ആണ്ടിൽ ഒന്നര ലക്ഷം ബ്ലഡ് ബാഗ് ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന ഒരു ചെറിയ ഫാക്ടറി ഇന്ന് ഒരു ദിവസം ഒന്നര ലക്ഷം ബ്ലഡ് ബാഗ് ഉണ്ടാക്കും ആ ഫാക്ടറി ആയിരത്തി നാനൂറ് പേർക്ക് ജോലി കൊടുക്കുന്നു ലോകത്തെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ ബ്ലഡ് ബാഗ് നിർമ്മാണശാലയാണ് ആ ടെർമോ പെൻപോളിന്റെ ഫാക്ടറി തിരുവനന്തപുരത്തുള്ളത് അമ്പത്തെട്ട് രാജ്യങ്ങളിലേക്ക് ബ്ലഡ് ബാങ്ക് കയറ്റി അയക്കുന്നു അമ്പത്തെട്ട് രാജ്യങ്ങളുടെ ഹെൽത്ത് കെയർ ആൻഡ് ബ്ലഡ് ട്രാൻസ്മിഷൻ സർവീസ് മുടങ്ങാതെ നടക്കണമെങ്കിൽ ആ ഫാക്ടറിയിലെ പ്രോഡക്ട്സ് അവിടെ എത്തണം അതുകൊണ്ട് ഈ ലോക്ക്ഡൌൺ വന്നപ്പോഴും മൂന്നോ നാലാമത്തെ ദിവസം അവരൊരു ഒരു അവരന്ന് സ്പെഷ്യൽ പെർമിഷൻ വാങ്ങിച്ച് ഇപ്പൊ എൺപത് ശതമാനം കപ്പാസിറ്റി യൂട്ടിലൈസേഷനിൽ ഓടിച്ചോണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണ് സോഷ്യൽ ഡിസ്റ്റൻസിങ് എല്ലാം പാലിച്ചുകൊണ്ട് അപ്പം ഞാൻ പറഞ്ഞു കേരളത്തിൽ തന്നെ ഇതുപോലെ ഇപ്പൊ നീനു പറയുന്ന പോലെ ഏറ്റവും വലിയ വിപ്ലവം വരാൻ പോകുന്നത് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് നമ്മുടെ ഈ കർഷകൻ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് ഈ ഹോം സ്റ്റെഡ്സ് നമ്മുടെ കൃഷി എന്ന് പറയുന്ന അതൊരു വിനോദാഭാസം തന്നെയാണ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇവിടെ ശരിയായിട്ട് കൃഷിയല്ല വി ആർ ഹോം സ്റ്റെഡ്സ് വേർ നമ്മളിപ്പം ഒരു കോക്കനട്ട് ഫാമർ എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ആരും ഇല്ല ഇവിടെ ലൈക്ക് പൊള്ളാച്ചിയിലും ഒക്കെ ഉള്ളതുപോലെ അവിടെ പത്തമ്പത് ഏക്കർ കോക്കനട്ട് ഗാർഡൻ കാണും ഇവിടെ ആണെങ്കിൽ ഒരു ഒരു ഏക്കർ പുറയിടത്തില് ഒരു പത്ത് മൂട് തെങ്ങ് കാണും കുറച്ച് രണ്ട് മൂന്ന് പ്ലാവും കുറച്ച് മാവും കുറെ കപ്പയും അത് ഇത് ഇങ്ങനെ വി ഹാവ് എ മിക്സ്ഡ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് ഗാർഡൻ കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് അഗ്രികൾച്ചർ ജസ്റ്റ് എ ഡിഫറെന്റ് കൈൻഡ് ഓഫ് അഗ്രികൾച്ചർ വളരെ പ്രോസ്പറസ് ആവാൻ പറ്റും ചിറ്റൂരിൽ ഈ ഞവര എന്ന് പറയുന്ന ഒരു വെറൈറ്റി ഓഫ് റൈസ് ഇപ്പം പാഡി കൾട്ടിവേഷൻ കേരളത്തിൽ അണിയിക്കണമെങ്കിലാണെങ്കിൽ നമ്മൾ ആ പല്ലവി കേട്ടത് എത്ര നാളായി ഈ ഞവര അയാളെ വിളിക്കുന്ന അയാളുടെ പേര് തന്നെ ഇപ്പൊ അങ്ങനെ ആയിരിക്കും ഞവര ഉണ്ണി എന്നാണ് പുള്ളിക്കാരൻ അറിയുന്നത് ഉണ്ണി സംതിങ് അയാളുടെ പേര് പുള്ളിക്കാരൻ
ഈ മച്ച് മോർ ദൻ എനി മറ്റേ എന്തോ പറയുന്നത് ബിരിയാണി റൈസിനെ കാട്ടിലൊക്കെ ഫൈവ് ഹൺഡ്രഡ് റുപ്പീസും തൗസൻഡ് റുപ്പീസ് കിലോഗ്രാം ഒക്കെയാണ് അതിന് വില അപ്പൊ വി ഹാവ് ടു മൂവ് ടു വാല്യൂ ആഡ് ഇറ്റ് നിങ്ങളെല്ലാം സ്മാർട്ട് യങ്സ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഒക്കെയാണ് നിങ്ങളൊക്കെ നിങ്ങളുടെ അപ്പന്മാരും അമ്മച്ചിമാരും ഒക്കെ എടുത്തിരുന്ന ആ കൃഷിയെ കാട്ടിലും എത്രയോ മോഡേൺ ആയിട്ട് നിങ്ങളുടെ ഓൺ ലേബറും നിങ്ങളുടെ ഫാമിലിയുടെ ലേബറും ഒക്കെ കൊണ്ട് ഹയർഡ് ലേബർ കൊണ്ടൊന്നും ഇനി ഈ കാര്യങ്ങളൊന്നും നടക്കത്തില്ല കേരളത്തിൽ ബിക്കോസ് യു ആർ നോട്ട് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഗെറ്റ് ചീപ്പ് ലേബർ ഹിയർ എനി മോർ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗുഡ് കേരള ഷുഡ് നോട്ട് ബി എ ചീപ്പ് ലേബർ പ്ലേസ് ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഹാസ് ദ ഹയർ സ്റ്റാൻഡേർഡ് ഓഫ് ലിവിംഗ് ദ മോസ്റ്റ് എക്സ്പെൻസീവ് ലേബർ ഷുഡ് ബി അവൈലബിൾ ഇൻ കേരള and that should be the most skilled labor also so i think it's a good thing i think the social change verunu nammada krishi mellam aage onnu maaru adu swabhavam thanne maaru oru oru respectable opportunity oru respectable occupation aayittu adu maaru oru koravaayittalla allada parayum aa ende ipo aaro parayirunnalla alle endo tiruvandar bhagathukku paray oh ende magane rendu veedum okke njan ezhuthi koduthittundu devan sahayichu avane joli cheyanda aavashyam ഇപ്പൊ ജോലി ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ലാത്ത ഒരു വ്യക്തിയെ പറ്റി എനിക്ക് സാധാവമേ തോന്നത്തുള്ളൂ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരാളെ പറ്റി ജോലി ചെയ്യേണ്ട ആവശ്യമില്ല എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞു ജോലി അനിവാര്യമാണല്ലോ അല്ലേ ഒരു ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ്ങിന് സെൽഫ് പ്രൈഡും ഡിഗ്നിറ്റിയും എന്നൊക്കെ പറയുന്ന കാര്യങ്ങൾ വേണമെങ്കിൽ അവനവൻ ചെയ്യുന്ന അവൻ അധ്വാനം കൊണ്ട് ഉണ്ടാക്കുന്ന കാശ് കൊണ്ട് ഞാൻ ജീവിക്കുന്നു എന്നുള്ള ആ ഒരു ആത്മാഭിമാനം വേണ്ടേ ഐ ഡോണ്ട് നോ വെതർ ഐ ആൻസേർഡ് നീനോസ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ബട്ട് ഓക്കെ താങ്ക് യു താങ്ക് യു നീനോ വേറെ ആരെങ്കിലും ഉണ്ടോ ബലസ ഹൈ മൈ നെയിം ഇസ് ജിത്തിൻ ദാൻ ഐ ടേക്ക് കെയർ ഓഫ് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ലീസിംഗ് ഫോർ എ ന്യൂ ഓഫീസ് പ്രോജക്റ്റ് ഇൻ ട്രിവാൻഡ്രം ഒരു എംബസി ടൂറിസ്റ്റ് എക്സ് സോൺ എന്ന് പറഞ്ഞിട്ട് ദേർ ഇസ് എ ന്യൂ ഓഫീസ് കോംപ്ലക്സ് ദാറ്റ്സ് കമ്മിംഗ് അപ് ഇൻസൈഡ് ടെക്നോ പാർക്ക് സോ ഐ ഹെഡ് മാർക്കറ്റിംഗ് ഫോർ ദാറ്റ് എനിക്ക് ഒരു സ്മോൾ ക്വറി ഉണ്ട് വിത്ത് റിഗാർഡ് ടു ഹൗ ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഇസ് പെർഫോമിംഗ് എസ്പെഷ്യലി വിത്ത് റിലേഷൻ ടു ദി ഐ ടി ഇൻഡസ്ട്രി ഓർ ദി അപ്കമിംഗ് ഐ ടി ഇൻഡസ്ട്രി സർ യു മെൻഷൻ ദ ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് പോസിറ്റീവ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് യു നോ വിച്ച് പ്രോബ്ലി ഹാസ് ലെറ്റ് ടു അസ് ബീങ് എ സെൽഫ് സസ്റ്റെയിനിങ് സോഷ്യൽ ഇക്കണോമിക് ബബിൾ ലോട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് സോഷ്യൽ ഇക്കണോമിക് ബബിൾസ് ഉണ്ട് വിച്ച് ആർ സെൽഫ് സസ്റ്റെയിനിങ് but mm. however if you look at uh, from an it infrastructure or or an it uh, field uh, side in you know a lot of youngsters today aspire to be in uh, why do you think or what are the factors that would contribute to very few players uh, coming up in the state and uh, thereby in? creating new job opportunities no in in it yeah in the it sector why do you think there are only very few players uh, setting up new businesses in in kerala no but i i am not sure whether that's a correct statement that there are very few players see let me just tell you i this techno park in trivandrum from the time its construction started i have been watching that project okay mm-hmm. and um, when it was set up there were no takers for it okay and uh, tata um, uh, consultancy services agreed to set up a small training center there that was it there was nothing else there then there was a big gap mm-hmm. a few years actually when nothing happened and then the techno park came up with a very interesting idea and the person responsible for it was rajiv vasudevan who was then the ceo he developed a strategy for it which was based on setting up business incubator in the first biz technology business incubator in india was set up in the techno park in and that became the magnet for drawing a few and so the character of techno park changed see all other techno parks in india were only competing for the same bit of firms they were all competing for units of infosys or wipro or tcs or cognizant or, and that's what they wanted to brag about we've got this we've got the half a million square feet which is taken by so and so half a million kerala's techno park was the first one which came up with dozens and dozens of small startups and that those startups some of them were have have become big successes later and that's the nature of the game the pyramid is very very uh, <coughs> very narrow as you go up in other words you with out of every 100 startups probably 10 will go to the next level 
and out of them one or two will reach uh, you know what is called unicorn stage etc and there you have uh, already um, ibs was started there suntech was started there in fact there was there were some uh, english and japanese small companies alami images and a couple of others who came to techno park only because those entrepreneurs saw from the uh, from the internet that there is uh, one techno park somewhere in uh, one remote part of india which is offering a business incubating in business incubation uh, you know facility so if you i mean i don't know what you see uh, nitin when you go to the techno park i see a hell of a lot of activity and i see hundreds of companies operating in techno park hundreds of companies operating in info park hundreds of companies operating on small small companies i don't know what more we should expect from this eco from this uh, uh, you know it ecosystem which in, because i what, what what i am trying to get at is i think it services there is a uh, i mean it, its character is changing and the the emerging trends in it in, in which is going to be based on blockchain artificial intelligence uh, data analytics and uh, machine learning and uh, iot etc and all you are going to find i think uh, very interesting companies coming up from kerala this massive scale uh, large scale uh, what i would call labor cost arbitrage uh, service companies and all the kerala did not do very well i really have no regrets about that frankly speaking you know i think uh, uh, kerala having missed that bus was i mean okay regrettable but not too bad a thing what is more interesting is say like for instance a blockchain academy no other state has set it up and there are many companies who are who are interested in this state just because of that blockchain academy now these are not things which are going to see massive scale developments immediately but i think you are going to find the 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 nature of the it uh, sector is itself going to change and um, kerala is not going kerala is going to be very well positioned because you know i read yesterday in fact you asked this question is very interesting i read yesterday in a, something in the social media that just like we talk about wfh you know work from home there's another thing called wnh work near home now uh, shared service facilities are being set up going to be set up by the government by, by uh, the it um, department of kerala which will be facilities which will enable small and small um, it enterprises to set up shop at many many more locations so i think we are going to see a paradigm change a paradigm shift i feel we are going to see a big shift away from huge centralized integrated operations in every business segment not just it in every business segment you are going to find this change away from this massive centralized large cohorts of people to small decentralized dispersed nimble and as nasim talib would say much more uh, 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 resilient uh, uh, you know uh, enterprises which are capable of surviving shocks right uh, thank you sir and uh, my uh, my uh, observations are also very similar to yours karanam uh, even i feel that uh, we have a lot of uh, companies or firms that are dealing with uh, very niche or upcoming sectors but my question was more directed towards the statement that you mentioned also that we missed uh, the bus wherein uh, you know we failed to attract large scale uh, yeah. service did. sector we companies did. do you think you can attribute a f- uh, couple of factors uh, to that or why did we or do you think is oh, there a reason no, no, why, I, did, why I, we missed that i uh, see what in the early days one of the things which i know is can you imagine the kind of reports which were being sent back to infosys and all that when somebody from government of kerala say like the then chief minister ak antony or punjali kutti or somebody like that will i will call up narayana murthy or nandan nilaykani or somebody and say please bring uh, you know we would like you to this thing mm-hmm. they will send they will listen very politely and they'll say all right we'll send somebody that mm-hmm. person will come and look and will look through the eyes of that you know the 30s 40s youngster who is based in bangalore and what does he or she see when they come to trivandrum no pubs no kfc 
no McDonald's, no nightlife. You know, and Trivandrum is Trivandrum. Let's face it; it's a polar opposite of Bangalore. No? So mm-hmm. that's so they will go back and give a report. They won't say no KFC, no this thing and all that. They will go back and give a very scholarly report saying completely unsuitable. Mm-hmm. And frankly speaking, that was what happened because I, 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 you know, why I'm saying this? I'll let you in on a secret. There's an organization called Trivandrum Agenda Task Force. <laughs> which is uh, comprises people like VK Matthews, Johnny Muthut and uh, several others. And I was one of the founding members of that. So none of these big guys were coming to Techno Park. I'm talking about that time. So you know what TATF did? When um, I still remember that time, AK Anthony was the chief minister and uh, some pitch was made. Somebody in the TATF knew um, um, Narana Murthy personally. So they went and told uh, uh, Chief Minister A.K. Anthony that, uh, see, uh, CM on the Bangalore Poi uh, at the Infosys campus on the visit to the um, Narayan Murthy on the uh, Kerala Lake on the Shanichal, it will have a good effect. Nyangala, we'll do background work and all before that. But she CM on the Pona. A.K. Anthony is supposed to have said, I'm not CM. I'm not a CM. Of like any form, but upon the person whom he told that to said Chinese president in a Narana Murti, a Kana night of Bandla Paran, Vedam Patuan, is Arnapon. Then he had no answer to that because he didn't know that, that the Chinese president had come to Bangalore to see Narana Murti to invite him to, uh, to, to set up shop in China. So before that, what we did, a group of three or four people from TATF including uh, Chandra Hasan of, uh, from the travel trade, then uh, somebody else from uh, Mahesh, or somebody representing the builders uh, there, um, and I think Johnny Muthut representing finance and somebody else. Three or four people, they went to Bangalore and set up a meeting with Narayana Murthy, that um, Mohandas Pai, and a couple of others. And they had a one hour meeting. And they explained what is the advantage and with they explained with rupees dollars you know showing cost per job cost per person attrition rates uh, uh, you know things like that there was it was done done deal after that that one hour meeting did it mm-hmm. see there's a very big difference from some ch- they sending somebody comes here and sees that all this uh, no 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 this uh, no uh, McDonald's and no pubs and all that and goes back and he won't report that but he will go and he doesn't want to work here he doesn't want to work here how is he going to allow Infosys to come but the Narayana Murthy's and Nandan Nilaykanis are business people they're driven by costs they're driven by uh, you know the availability of skilled skills and things like that when you have answers to all those questions. They have business people. They'll take the right decision. Mm-hmm. And then, then look at how big the uh, Infosys operation is here in, in right. Kerala. And look at what happened after that to uh, when um, uh, you, uh, yes. the, uh, the others like uh, you know, Cognizant and, and how much uh, then TCS scaled up their operation even UST further. UST Global, example. etc. So all that happened afterwards. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Nitin. We have five more minutes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 What's your name? Hi, sir. And we are Arjun. Yeah. 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 National and I'm getting a Rajitan and it's an angle. A good the 95 percentage of me that will support the business in the other world and investors. I'm at the world famous economist. I are of Kios. I get a rich that poor daddy will be at the mind and never net a lying alone. I'm to get the area. I do it from the lecture. But I'm the pulley guy and you are another business that say an alcar could check at the name. But she youngsters number of ideas are alcar and angle. Our business and on the Kojasi Lumbo, the government about the Langa, Yunorna, Namkuru, 
മെയിൻ പ്രോബ്ലം ഫേസ് ചെയ്യുന്ന ക്യാപിറ്റൽ ആണ് അപ്പൊ അതിനുവേണ്ടി ചെല്ലുമ്പോ അവര് പറയുന്നത് നമ്മളെ കൊണ്ട് ഇതിന് ഇങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യണമെങ്കിൽ ഇന്ന കാര്യങ്ങൾ വേണം മാക്സിമം നമ്മളെ ഡിമോട്ടിവേറ്റ് ചെയ്തിട്ട് ഇത് ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റില്ല നിങ്ങൾക്ക് ഇങ്ങനെയൊക്കെ ചെയ്യേണ്ടി വരും അങ്ങനെ എന്നാ മാത്രമേ ഇത് കിട്ടുള്ളൂ എന്നൊക്കെ പറഞ്ഞ ലോണിനൊക്കെ വേണ്ടി ചെല്ലുമ്പോൾ നമുക്ക് കുറെ ക്രൈറ്റീരിയാസ് ഉണ്ട് അപ്പോ നമ്മൾ ഒരു സാധാരണ ചെയ്യാൻ ഉദ്ദേശിക്കുന്ന ആൾ അപ്പൊ തന്നെ ഡ്രോപ്പ് ഔട്ട് ആയി പോകും കാരണം ഇത്രയും ക്രൈറ്റീരിയാസ് ഒക്കെ പറയുമ്പോ തന്നെ അവര് ഡൗൺ ആയി പോകുന്ന മെയിൻ കാരണം അതാണ് ക്യാപിറ്റലിന്റെ ഒരു മെയിൻ ഇഷ്യൂസ് ആണ് ഇപ്പൊ എല്ലാവർക്കും ഫേസ് ചെയ്യാൻ ഒരു മെയിൻ ഇഷ്യൂ അപ്പൊ ഇതില് എന്താ പേര് എന്റെ പേര് അർജുൻ അർജുൻ നിങ്ങൾ ഗവൺമെന്റിന്റെ അടുത്ത് പോയിട്ട് നിരുത്സാഹപ്പെടുത്തുന്ന വിധത്തിലുള്ള ചോദ്യങ്ങളാണ് സമീപനമാണ് അവിടെ കിട്ടിയെങ്കിൽ യു ട്രൈ ടോക്കിംഗ് ടു ആൻ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റർ കരിഞ്ഞു പോകും ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ക്യാപിറ്റൽ കയ്യിൽ ഇല്ല ഇപ്പൊ എന്താണ് സി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അപ്പ് ഒരു സ്റ്റാർട്ട് അപ്പിന്റെ സോഴ്സസ് ഓഫ് ഫണ്ട്സ് എന്താണ് ആരോ പറഞ്ഞ പോലെ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ത്രീ എഫ് ത്രീ എഫ് ആരാണ് ഫാമിലി ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് ആൻഡ് ഫൂൾസ് മൂന്നാമത്തെ എന്താണ് ഫൂൾസ് അപ്പൊ ഈ ഈ മൂന്ന് വിഭാഗത്തിൽ പെടുന്ന ആരെങ്കിലും ആയിരിക്കും നമ്മൾ നമ്മുടെ ആ എന്റെ പ്രോജക്റ്റിനെ സപ്പോർട്ട് ചെയ്തത് ഫാമിലി ഫ്രണ്ട്സും ഫൂൾസും മാത്രമാണ് ആൻഡ് ഇഫ് യു എക്സ്പെക്ട് ഗവൺമെന്റ് ടു ടേക്ക് ഗവൺമെന്റ് മണി ആൻഡ് പുട്ട് ഇറ്റ് ഇൻ ടു യുവർ വൈ ഓൺ എർത്ത് ഷുഡ് ദ ഡു ദ യു ആർ ടോക്കിംഗ് ടു ദ റോങ് പീപ്പിൾ so nyan parayna government's job is not to give you see if if on on the other hand you should go and talk to bankers you should talk to investors and you should be able to convince if you cannot convince them that means your project is not going to take off you, or you don't have the uh, you don't have the ability to your project may be good but you are unable to convince them, which means what you should do is you should try to get somebody into your team who will be able to do that part of the communication because that adu or kala meaning finance mansla unna raal a irikku you may be a very good tech guy but you may not be able to convince me when i ask you a lot of questions relating to return on investment payback period and things like that about the economics of of your venture so government is see it's time we stop thinking about government for everything even yan parayna inganatha itrayum important aayittu samoohathine baadhikkunna nammude samoohathinte adithraye baadhikkunna work like venda if you had wasted your time trying to convince government you would have been able to do nothing on the other hand you went to the community and the community welcomed you and started supporting you i mean not may not have welcomed you with open arms initially they might have been very suspicious angane aanu or business or business samrambham thodangumbodu idu pole thanne nobody is going to welcome you aalkar ippam vera ippam idellam nammada notions aanu nammal vicharikkum oh telangana il chenna allega andhra pradesh il chennal avade matte jagannath jagan mohan reddy ayala or pumalai aayittu ingane kaathirikkana ore thare welcome cheyanayittu please don't believe all that nowhere is this uh, is the entrepreneur everybody waiting for you if you have a bankable enterprise you should talk to investors first ningale back kiyan aitulla a initial seed money seed money idan tayar aitulla ee moonu f friends family and fools idu bo ee vibhagathil padunna oru korchu pere convince cheyidu kaiyittu you can do the initial work from there only you can take the next step so i think pinne kerlathil ippam arguably adha arjun da anubhavam endanu ningal aarile eduth samsarichu nu enikku vetta enikku athra vektam illa pache ende abhiprayathil the best startup ecosystem in india today is the kerala startup mission ningalkku endengilum idu polathe ningale nirulsahapaduthuna vidathulla anubhavangal vallu undengil ende abhiprayathil send an email to dr saji gobinath uh, ceo of kerala startup mission and i am sure he will he will look into that and respond to you he is a brilliant chap 
and pullikarande keelilulla kerala startup mission adu pole athrayum samarthamayittu athrayum effective aayittu work cheyna oru startup ecosystem india il illa you can trust me when i say that thank you sir yeah are you alone any more pressing questions i have a question which is uh, well it's really about what it's sort of covid related because you see two parts Allah, of, you didn't say your name who is the charming lady ha uh, shalini ha uh, so you know i see two parts ahead of us post covid uh there are lots of people who think that uh, there's going to be a cleaner greener a different kind of world that comes out of it and then there is another part which is there's going to be so much economic pain that in the hurry to catch up and just you know maintain livelihoods that we're going to go down the other path so kerala being a very consumerist society i think uh, Where, where do you see us going really i mean is it is it foolish to think that we're going to rethink some of the choices because in the past i think in your talk you just spoke about con, you know consumerism yeah. Yeah. and how we have high per capita con, consumption and also yeah. conspicuous consumption yeah as a plus and as a negative so yeah. my point is in uh, you know we are at that tipping point we can go in both directions yeah so how do we decide I mean, how can we ensure that even with managing livelihoods, we don't go back down the old path, the destructive? Yeah, no, it's a very, Shalini, you have asked a very, very important question, and that's the fateful choice. That's the choice we now have, and that is the opportunity we must not lose. And that is why there are so many groups which have formed. You know, I, I am a man. I mean, I find I've been added to many WhatsApp groups. and my whatsapp is <laughs> deluged with messages that but i you know i didn't ask to be added they have added me now if i leave i get 100 questions saying why are you leaving nobody asked me when they added me but resilient kerala rebuilding kerala matte kerala so but the point is what i like about it all is that's the thing which is special about kerala is that on any such subject like this a hundred groups will form and people will start giving their views giving their so if many people are thinking about this in government outside government in civil society among industry associations and uh, even other professional groups we they all are aware of the fact that we now have a choice given to us by serendipity you know by circumstances which nobody uh, foresaw nobody saw that you will get a lockdown like this that life will come to a halt and there will be a stand still and things like that so you are right the part of the good news is that suddenly some some things have started getting cleaned up like i read somewhere that the ganges is now clear and the fish people are seeing fish uh, frolicking in the ganges and then somebody is saying he is from jalandhar he was able to see the himalayas and you know after the, you are seeing it after 60 years the dawlagiri mountain range and somebody is in delhi said that he saw blue skies for the first time in 10 years or 20 years and so all these are anecdotal kind of information but it shows that our economic activity was so damaging that we were and this is something we should know because uh, intelligent people uh, scholars well wishers of our country uh, who people whom we should be listening to nammada gurunathan maar nu venangi parayam such people have been telling us but we are not listen we just not we been so busy in our headlong um, uh, rush down this long slippery slope of consumerism and all that that we never listen here's a great opportunity will we take i mean should we take the opportunity what do you think shalini of course we should take the opportunity that's a no brainer will we take the opportunity i, I don't know but i am a optimist and i don't have one drop of cynical blood in me okay and uh, so i believe we will take the we should take the opportunity whatever you and i and all of us here on, on this webinar can do to ensure that we don't miss this opportunity we should do it's our duty we should not remain silent we should not you know we should stand up be counted 
and um, you know you are already doing such phenomenal work as part of venda you know which uh, in a tough thankless job like this you are doing um, uh, uh, you know um, uh, so great work so i am sure you have no shortage of courage and uh, resourcefulness and all that so people like you if they stand up i am sure society will not uh, will not fall back we should take the right choices this is a great opportunity i wouldn't say this is a last opportunity because i'm not such a pessimist but i'm saying but this is a great opportunity and we we should uh, you know we should uh, use this opportunity to take the right choices and um, move away from the mistakes of the past and uh, do things more sensibly but somebody also said you know sometimes we need this gun to our head a wise man said man is a very reasonable creature he reasons and he is reasonable he does the reasonable thing when he has a gun to his head so i mean why do we do the reasonable thing only when the gun is pointed at our head why can't we do it when there's no gun pointing at our head so that's my point so here there is a gun pointed at our head because of covid isn't it we have um, we have we are in a crisis the industry has stopped everything now everything is going to restart the problem is when everything restarts we are going to go back to where we were and uh, all this cleanliness and all this fresh water and all this um, birds chirping and all that which people have been writing about is going to probably enjoy it while it lasts because we don't know how long it's going to last but i think it can last much longer provided we behave more responsibly and the, there are green shoots let me just get, tell you very quickly one why not when this uh, flood when this uh, 2018 mother of all floods i mean the uh, monsoons happened and there were a lot of landslips and a lot of damage i was with a group which uh, um, uh, and they were doing some good work and i was supporting them so it's called the hume center for uh, biology and wildlife ecology in bayanad and they were i sat in on a couple of discussions and i remember listening to uh, we were in a tea shop and there were it was not a formal meeting in a tea shop we were sitting around a table and there was one guy who was a vice president of mupainad panchayat i remember the name still mupainad panchayat and the vice president he was telling me about i mean he was telling us about the gadgil committee report this guy who doesn't even look as though he's been to school you know he might have been to junior school or something but he was about 50 60 years old and he was talking authoritatively about uh, the gadgil committee report and he was saying in their panchayat they have set up a biodiversity cell and uh, that biodiversity cell has to clear if you want to use a, J- a jcb for cutting earth in mupainad panchayat as advised by the biodiversity committee of i mean that section of the gadgil committee report this little panchayat in vainad will refer that application if i go saying i am balagopal i have the jcb i want to uh, cut and level some patch they'll say application kodukku in the proper form we will give it to a biodiversity committee which will study the proposal and tell you whether you can do that or not that is change isn't it that's how change happens we should start doing all these smart things then so change is should come bottom up not top down the people start seeing that their lives are affected by this bad decisions they will step up the people have to step up i think it's the uh, time has passed for governments and all that to step fortunately we have at least a much more responsive sensible government than many other state governments in the country that is why our people feel safer here than other people are feeling in other parts of the country but i think this is a golden opportunity thank you thank you just want to clarify i'm not part of venda i'd like to call myself a friend of venda Wow, that's good. Thanks, Al. Then you should become a part of my life. <laughs> yeah, we've been wanting it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's so persuasive. I think you need advocacy. Needs very. Uh, But a cousin, the Shalini, whom you met before the call, has been trying to get this Shalini on board. Uh, okay. Someday, someday, yes. Yeah. Right. anybody else uh, dina she is my aunt <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you show your face or uh, uh, bala clearly knows which shall we is which <laughs> <coughs> yeah 
Who, which? Uh, who is this? <laughs> Is no, is there another Shalini on the there, call? That's the Shalini. That's the vendor Shalini. Okay. Shalini, your mic is muted. Okay. okay. Oh, all right. Okay. Then I... Good? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think I'll do the honors of the next five minutes to say thanks to you, Mr. Bala, uh, because this has been very encouraging. Uh, we, have, we are trying our best to keep the team, uh, you know, motivated and their spirits high and try to even understand everything about the ecosystem that they work with and work in. So, we've got uh, a few people lined up and we're glad that you agreed to uh, touch on this subject because um, we... As much as we wanted it, uh, we didn't. We couldn't find somebody who would, you know, come out with such uh, uh, assertive uh, statements about Kerala. And you're one of the few that I've seen in my last six years of working in Kerala who really has something wonderful to say. I've seen some nice people, but I've learned a lot from you. And I was personally thrilled when you started off talking about uh, Professor Nair and uh, Professor Ramaswamy, because I grew down the lane from Professor Ramaswamy and oh, okay. uh, yeah and uh, I used to take my dogs on the walk and the person that he was he would even stop somebody like me as young as me and was excited about what is happening in my life my school you know uh, and those things were my and we used to look up to uh, Professor Ramaswamy a lot and uh, just that you cited him I just wanted to say I grew across him and those were the uh, tall leaders that I saw in my neighborhood who really aspired me a lot. So uh, with a little bit of uh, the background of what I do uh, with related to Venda and the Bangalore project, I also have something to add on to uh, this um, six years of what I've been observing in Kerala. It's very positive, uh, you know, state initiatives by the government, by the people, a lot of civil societies. And I also made a little note as you were talking about, you know, these points. One is the systemic um, effort to address poverty. As much as we were trying to talk about the Dalit, the tribals, and the fisher folk, uh, compared to where I come from in Karnataka, I have seen a whole lot of uh, measures that are being implemented in terms of actually addressing uh, the needs of this, these, uh, you know, vulnerable and uh, for, you know, marginalized communities. And that's something that is very stark about Kerala, and which is very, very encouraging to me personally. The second is uh, how we've been able to take control and address the ecological devastation that's happening. There's so much to do with environment protection, starting from the school-based syllabus where you know the, all schools have um, something that's concretely as a syllabus for addressing this and the fruit of it for the investment that we've made in the state for the last 10 years, we are going to see in the coming generation, like my team is now talking about the value of going back to farming and your backyard gardens, all of that is also an investment the state has made in the curriculum that is impacting. That's something I've very seriously observed, which I'm not seeing in Karnataka. Then the other is our uh, investment or the priority for the public health system. And in times of this COVID, we are seeing the fruit of it, actually. Uh, till now, we were not able to showcase the power of it. But for somebody like me, who is coming from another state, having worked in the development sector, I clearly see uh, the advantages of uh, the investment we've made there and how being a small state, we're able to take those measures. And during COVID, we've actually showcased the whole uh, uh, you know, side of uh, the investment and the outcome of it. Then the next bit you spoke about is the Kodumashri network. And uh, I even wrote an article last month and it was picked up by the Women Without Borders in Vienna and showcased uh, next to Shobadi's article uh, about the Kudumasri uh, you know, movement in Kerala and how for me, it, I had to go back and study it because uh, we got a call, casual call to the house during the COVID uh, uh, you know, month of April, May, asking how uh, my, uh, that is CC's parents, we live with them, uh, how they are doing and their medications are in place. If not, then you have to go and stock <laughs> it up. Uh, and it was an average woman from a Kudumasri unit who knew the names and had the database. As much as I was concerned about them holding data like that through the medicine and, and the list of stuff that we need, uh, it was commendable that an ordinary woman was entrusted this uh, healthcare process. You know? So all these are very progressively um, 
uh, what do you say, things that we need to appreciate yeah. about a systemic uh, investment that the government and the people are making. Um, having said all of this, I also want to say, particularly working with Venda and um, the issue of drugs and narcotics and substance, I have seen two other agendas that have come up in a lot of my conversations around uh, with people like, you know, small uh, subgroups like you all and uh, thinkers and who can actually change systemic uh, um, processes is, uh, which I don't see discussed anywhere else, is the militarization of the community. Like the, the war economy is also being discussed in Kerala because it must be because I'm working with the drugs or the world that is funding this uh, you know, militarization of this community. I hear discussions and serious discussions, like you said about the man in the Chayakada. People are uh, talking about it and that awareness itself is is very encouraging for people like me who really want to bring about community change. And the last of it is the false narrative of the religious nationalism agenda. And I see common men discussing this, which was not, which you don't even see in Bangalore where I was brought up in colleges or in uh, you know, communities where children are going to schools and colleges. Uh, so, But here it's an, a normal man, average man's conversation. So there is something right about the state. Like you're trying to, say, I think we need to, um, who will be vocal about it because yeah. they, because uh, of the image that has been you know created about it in the last decade. This is me as an external person, just six years in the state, but my roots are here. So there is an interest to even study and understand. So when if anybody is talking about Kerala, it's an extra year for me. So I hope my team has also learned something today, and I am um, hoping that uh, you know we will have these discussions with you. Um, and on this particular subject of Kerala, because we're not able to find a lot of people with the uh, you know, repository of knowledge that you have in terms of business and work and people and grassroots initiatives. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I'm excited uh, that you are uh, part of this team and you really value our work. Thank you. Mr. Raja, you want to say something? Thank you. You're muted. You're muted. I think you said all that needs to be said. I, I, it was fascinating for me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm from Bangalore. Actually, should, uh, uh, if, uh, he should know, or he, he may not know. I, 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 I was born and brought up in Tamil Nadu, and I have lived all my professional life in Bangalore, rather than five years in the US. So my Kerala knowledge is limited to what I know from Diana. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, so it, it's, a, it's a good uh, uh, civic lesson for me about Kerala. Uh, very, very informative, very inspiring. Thank you. Are you one of the Rajas from Rajapala? <laughs> I have no <laughs> blue blood in my... <laughs> no, no, no. What I'm saying is there's a community there. Rajas. I understand. <laughs> Chatiya, the, the no. Are they Chatiyas? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Ra oh, okay. So, the... My when I was born, my I was named as Shanmugam. Okay. My my grandmother thought I should become like a king. <laughs> so, and you have. <laughs> so she. Your grandmother it. must be very pleased. Yeah. She should be smiling from upstairs now. Uh, <laughs> so she added this raja onto my front actually. Okay. There is no other lineage that I can play. Okay. We're very anyway, very nice meeting you. Thank yeah, you. we're very okay. happy and uh, we're very proud that Mr. Raja has been with us uh, on the board. Uh, kind of our uh, moral compass. <laughs> very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank Bye. you once again. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye. It was a pleasure. Bye.